exams recently, so just another project to log in your crochet diaries. This project in essence, very easy, scrap yarn friendly as well, even with a single crochet stitch, we're not using a lot of yarn. Um, I made a mistake <laughs> of using, I just really wanted to use the yarn. I had like a wool al alpaca, I think, blend for this first variation that I did. The f halo, like the fluff coming off of it, just made it a little challenging to film with my bamboo crochet hooks. I'm hoping it's not too much of a girl's breakfast in the finished product, but I'll try to add notes and commentary to help if there's anything that's unclear with what was being filmed. But this version just makes use of a single crochet stitch from start to finish. I wanted to use two different colours, um, a white and then a red border as an accent, which I think is still a good, a good combo. I'd probably recommend like a cotton yarn for this project. The second version that I worked on uh, differs a little bit at the ends because I had this ribbon that I wanted to feed into it. So it still tapers, similar to this version. But instead of continuing on with a tie, we make a loop to feed in our ribbon. We've also really easily achieved. So still a cool project, even though <laughs> I had some wayward results. Let's talk about what equipment we need next. So I think using cotton yarn is a great choice for this project. I used a four ply myself for the headband that uses a ribbon. I also watched a video by Jada and Stitches where she recommends cotton as well for its durability as well as how it holds its shape even after washing. I used a 3mm crochet hook for my four ply cotton yarn and a 7mm for my slightly heavier woolen yarn. Have some scissors handy, darning needles to weave in your ends. This is optional but having measuring tape handy can also be a good idea for this project in case you didn't make any adjustments for your particular head shape and size. Another optional piece of equipment but I had some ribbons lying around that I wanted to use. How we're going to approach crocheting both types of bands is to work on the long skinny rectangular part that'll sit on top of your head, the band essentially, and then we work on the tapering ends. So for this version, after we've tapered one end, we do a colour change where we can then start on our tie, we work our way back, and then orbit around our band, create another tie before ending our round. And then for this version, we just start decreasing to create this end before chaining the loop to feed in our ribbon. Okay, to crochet our band, make a slip stitch followed by 80 chain stitches. I'm going with 80 chains with a slightly heavier woolen yarn. However, for a four ply cotton yarn with my three millimeter hook, I'd crochet something around 100 chains. So in total, I'd be crocheting 81 chains, not forgetting our turning chains, or with a lighter yarn, 101 chains. To make it easier to keep count, you can always use some stitch markers. What I'm doing here is to pin a mark in at every 20 chains. So I think it's nice to modify the width of the band as you see fit. If you like something a little skinnier, perhaps you can stop after three rows. And if you like something thicker, you might crochet all the way up to nine. So it's totally preferential and you should do whatever you feel you're going to be happy with. I continue to do this for five rows, that's about the width that I'm happy with for the band, remembering that the red border will also add some additional thickness to it. Ok, 
okay, let me explain myself here. I did a bit of a hacky job of single crochet decreases for these ends. I think the end result looks okay, but I'll also show you a clearer demo for the cotton headband, where instead of decreases, I would skip the very last stitch of a row before moving on to the next that also gave a gradual decrease. However, if you did want to use single crochet decreases, what you do is to pull up a loop in each of the next two stitches and then yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Because I had five rows, I would start the decreases by skipping the first stitch of my starting row, where my turning chain is, decrease and then single crochet into the last two stitches. I would alternate that the higher up and narrower I got until I reached a single stitch. To crochet our ties, after finishing our decreases to a single stitch, for our colour change, right before I pull through all of my loops, I'm dropping my white yarn and substituting it with my red yarn. Just make sure to leave a tail to weave in later. From here, crochet 40 chains for the length of the ties. This is a completely optional step, however, instead of working through the front side of the starting chain, I learned a trick of working my stitches into the back bump for what I think is a neater bottom edge. Again, this is totally optional and a single crochet through the front side of your chain will still be perfectly fine. What we do here is then orbit around our work so that the ties are comprised of one row. As we make our way to the other end, remember that it needs to be tapered in our white yarn too. So you can work as close to the ends as you can in red, work on your tapered end and then resume in red to join your work. Weave in your ends with your darning needle and that's one headband down. Because we want to attach ribbons to this headband, the ends will differ a little. Let me show you how I tapered these ends and then chained a larger loop to allow for a ribbon to fit through. Work a single crochet in each row. The main thing is to kind of work around the stitch as opposed to in them so that your work is even. And you can kind of see this when you hold your work flat and you can see gaps into it. Insert your hook through those gaps. How I then decrease is to skip the last stitch in my working row, as you'll see here, before moving up to my next row by turning my work and repeating this until I have three remaining stitches to work with.
if you've already made one side as I have, it helps to measure them against one another. For the size of ribbon I'm wanting to use, chaining 6 and slip stitching into the third stitch of my working row was sufficient size. If you happen to be working with a ribbon or any kind of cord that might be thicker or maybe less flexible to fit through your loop, feel free to modify how many chain stitches you make before tying off and weaving in your tail ends. Aside from that though, you are done! I hope you give both of these patterns a try. I really hope this video wasn't too confusing to listen to. If it was, comments are always welcome. Thanks for watching!